Great, well, I'm Steve King. I'm the Pioneer Corn Research Director for all of Canada. And Leon, you can introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Leon Hendricks. I'm uh, the corn breeder here in uh, Carmen, Manitoba. And so uh, what we're doing uh, for the next few weeks is, is working in, uh, in the breeding nursery. And so this breeding nursery close to Carmen is, is developing the early maturity corn germplasm, the genetics that we're going to use for new hybrids throughout Western Canada next year, two years from now, up till uh, nine or ten years from now. And so there's a lot of work that's involved upstream and each year we have to test and retest and retest again and there's an awful lot of manual labor that goes into it. Which yeah. You're getting your hands dirty on that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, so every uh, hybrid is made up of a cross uh, between inbreds and uh, that's what we're mainly uh, working at. So you may have the impression, oh, this is pretty poor corn, but uh, these are in fact inbred lines. And uh, we need to maintain and develop these uh, inbred lines. And that's really the beauty of, of hybrid corn is that you take these inbred parents that are, are pretty small, they look pretty weak. If this was in a farmer's field, you wouldn't be impressed. But with a hybrid crop, you cross two of these inbreds together and you get something called hybrid vigor. And then you get the huge corn that we actually sell to the farmers and then they can get uh, the yield potential and the profitability from, from our products. So Leon, maybe uh, maybe you want to explain a little bit about all the, the paper bags out here because it looks kind of funny. Yeah, it does. Like we uh, make uh, self-pollinations and crossing in this nursery. And the way we do that, we, uh, we have uh, what we call shoot bags. They get uh, put up on a, on a shoot of a, of a plant. So these are actually uh, too advanced, but maybe right here you have one. Uh, this has recently been uh, treated. I'm not sure if you can. Focus. So, so really, what Leon's looking for is he's looking for First, a new shoot. A near, what's going to be an ear, but before the silks come out. And so, if we put this bag on it before the silks come out, then we uh, we protect those silks because there's pollen in the air all the time. And uh, what we have to do is make is to control the pollination. So, only the pollen of the genetics we're interested in. Are, are used uh, to make the pollination and so we'll put it uh, put the bag on first yeah, before right. the silks come out you can yeah, try so here's that the shoot uh, developing there's no silks out yet so there's no uh, unwanted pollen yet and then we can put the shoot back on and we pull it snug so uh, what Leon's going to do here is he's going to make an actual pollination so he's coming through he, He's got a plant where we have silks visible underneath the shoot bag. It's protecting those silks, as we talked about before. And now he also has shedding pollen on this tassel, so he's going to put the tassel bag on top and to collect that pollen so we can make a controlled pollination. Have a date and, a, and an inside of the bag. So I'll put the tassel in there, okay. take the flag leaf. And so what he's doing there is he's, he's putting the top leaf in the crease of the, of the bag and what that does is it uh, holds the bag on there. So if the wind comes up overnight, the bag stays on and doesn't blow off. He gives a little fold on the bottom and a paper clip to hold that fold. And so what that's doing is as pollen is shed, it doesn't just rain out onto the ground, it's, it's uh, held within the bag. And so we would leave this overnight crew would come back tomorrow morning so let's pretend it's tomorrow morning you come through and what do you do to do a takedown and then I collect the pollen so we do this only uh, in yeah after 10 11 o'clock when uh, the temperatures are high enough and the humidity uh, is not uh, too high so then we give the back uh, some really okay so he's He's got the pollen inside that bag now, and so what he has to do now is, is bring that pollen to these silks without exposing the silks to the air. And so watch his technique. So he makes a little umbrella over top of the silks so the, any pollen doesn't come down by gravity. He reaches it with one hand and takes out the shoot bag. And then now that he's over top of the silks, he gives that brown bag a good shake to release the pollen and it now rains down on those silks and that gets fertilized and, and he uh, staples the brown bag to keep it, hold it on there and so we're going to come back in September and harvest that ear and there should be a couple hundred kernels there and that's what we, we use for the next step in the process.
So we hire dozens and dozens of high school students to, to help us do that work. So it's a good opportunity for them. Many of them, it's their first job. And so they get a taste of the working world. And at the same time, uh, we get our job done in a very short amount of time. Yeah. And so a big goal in developing corn for Western Canada is, is, to, is to really push flowering earlier. Because if you push flowering earlier, then you get uh, your grain filling sooner, you get starch laid down on those kernels. So if we do get a premature killing frost in the fall, the farmers have something to harvest. And so as the crews are working through this nursery, they're pollinating the plants that flower first and then leaving the ones that flower later. And so that's that's a key to making breeding progress. Yeah, there's already a big uh, cutoff on, on that end. Uh, then all these lines, they also get uh, test crossed. So uh, once what does that mean? That means you have a, a known inbred line that you cross onto this uh, this new experimental line, and that gives you a new experimental hybrid. They are being tested uh, then on uh, several locations, and uh, we only advance uh, the inbred lines where the hybrids have good test cross results. And that's basically yield, maturity. Yeah, yield, maturity, flowering, uh, standability. Goss as weld resistance. Yeah, disease resistance, especially goss, uh, common smut would be an item. Yeah. So all the key traits that a farmer would expect is have, uh, any time we have an opportunity to see those traits differentiate in the field, then that's an opportunity for us to learn and to, to cull out the really bad stuff and only keep the best stuff.